Hi everyone, my name is Evans Rwala from Domas College of Education, Zomba, Malawi. I'm glad to be part of the 25th Afri Lakes International Conference. And my contribution to the conference is this presentation, which is titled An Application of Dan's Concept of Defective Terminology to the Analysis of COVID-19 Terminologies in Jijewa. So I'll take you through the presentation just in a moment. Um, as you are all aware, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected all countries, each and every country in the world. So this makes it imperative for these countries to come together uh, and respond to the problem with some unity of purpose. So there is also need to communicate a universal message. COVID-19 is a universal problem. It can only be sorted out with universal um, uh, solutions. So given the extent of linguist the linguistic diversity that we have in, in the world today, is it really possible to achieve uh, a univocal messaging? This is the question that Fedula 2007 is asking, and we, this study will also try to address this question to some extent. However, uh, standardization of terminologies has been one of the main strategies employed to reduce disparities in the communication of information of global significance. Uh, in this case, we're talking of COVID-19. So um, when that is happening, usually it involves few languages, global languages, the, the developed languages. Uh, this is reflected in the way the United Nations agencies operate, including the World Health Organization. So the UN has six official languages, Arabic, Chinese, English, French, uh, Russian, uh, uh, and Spanish, which means that when the standardization is taking place, they use these languages, which means for that information to, 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 to flow to other languages, the non-official languages, uh, there, there has to be translation involved this is a cross-linguistic activity, cross-linguistic activity, which means that cross-linguistic terminology work has to be um, uh, given a lot of attention. It is a critical uh, tool for making sure that information cooked at the, uh, at the UN is able to flow to these other uh, non-official languages. In Malawi, um, Chichewa is arguably the most widely used and understood language. But despite this, finding effective equivalence for terminologies from specialized subject areas such as health and science is not that easy. And uh, uh, scholars such as Kishindo Jia Jia have uh, 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 written a lot about this problem. So the problem is usually are compounded by a lack of nationally arranged guidelines on specialized language and terminology use. Um, so that kind of environment creates uh, a fragile terminological infrastructure, which means that communicators of specialized information, in this case, COVID-19 as an example, are largely left to their own devices to identify and implement strategies for overcoming uh, all those terminological challenges that may exist. So this may end up creating room for the use of varied and sometimes defective terminology because there's nobody uh, to assess the effectiveness of the different um, equivalents that are, are selected and used uh, when communicating. Yeah, so much has been written on the role of inclusive use of language during COVID-19 communications. Actually, communication is identified as one of the key non-pharmaceutical interventions for COVID-19. It is a way of empowering people with the right information. Uh, uh, when people are empowered with the right information, they are able to make positive lifestyle choices. So empowering people with the right information can only happen if communication interventions are inclusively designed and um, inclusively implemented. Um, such inclusive communications are characterized by clarity and use of scientific terms or acronyms. And they are also characterized by 
uh, use of terms that are relevant to the audience. So in other words, what, uh, what this means is that language for effective COVID-19 communications need to be well planned for it to be um, effective, for it to be impactful on the uh, general public. Yeah, so much as it is the desire to have uh, COVID-19 information developed and uh, disseminated in a simpler form. The, the situation on the ground is not is far from that because according to Mishra and Dexter, in a study that was conducted in 15 countries to assess the websites, the COVID-19 websites, it was found that most of these websites had information written um, well above a grade 10 level. So it is recommended that such information be written at grade 10 or even grade 9, grade 8 level so that people can be able to understand the information. But 9 out of 10, most of the information was written above this level. Yeah, now, talking about uh, cross-linguistic terminology, the one 2020 warns that finding equivalent for standardized terms in minority languages or unofficial languages is not easy. Um, he identifies three key challenges that are likely to be first. The first one being an equivalence. This is where there is a lack of uh, a concept in the target language. So uh, it's difficult to find an equivalent term for such, uh, for describing such a concept. Uh, secondly, animophysism, whereby we have partial equivalence. So it, there is no one-to-one -one kind of equivalence between the source term and the target term, and the structural divergence or differences among languages also pose various kind of uh, difficulties to, to, to those working in cross-linguistic terminology. So this study has used Karen Dunn's taxonomy of defective terminology. And according to Dan, defective terminology is terminology that is incorrect, inconsistent, and unambiguous. Uh, so he has isolated those three uh, parameters, and it is these parameters that were used in this study to analyze the COVID-19 uh, terminologies in GJW. According to Dan, in corrected terms, uh, we're talking of uh, the use of an incorrect designation for a given concept. So you can have a concept, but you're giving it the wrong uh, designation. Uh, in consistent terms, it's the use of different terms for the same concept. So you can have one concept, but then you have several designations that are being used to refer to that kind of concept, which may end up creating confusion, of course. And then ambiguous terms are those terms whose meanings are unclear, indefinite, or univocal. So these are the parameters that this study used, uh, used to analyze the Chichewa equivalence for different COVID-19 terms. So this uh, study basically used the document analysis techniques to, to identify and analyze Chichewa equivalence for a total of 40 COVID-19 terms, the English COVID-19 terms. So this involved uh, going through Chichewa publications or any other sources that uh, uh, had um, Chichewa COVID-19 information, newspapers, public notices, radio adverts, uh, the televisions, and other um, sources. Uh, so each of the harvested term, terms was then analyzed for conceptual strength using the three parameters in, uh, as identified by Karen Dunn. So the three parameters being correctness, consistency, and conciseness. So a five-point scale was used to picture out uh, how, the, how if a term is conceptually faithful. So uh, under correctness, a term was actually tested using the five scale, uh, where if it is five, it means it is highly correct. If it is one, it means it's highly incorrect. So uh, uh, even the consistency, we use the same, and then conciseness, we use the same scale. Then the scores for each parameter were summed up to, to, to give us a, 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 a picture as to whether the term was uh, effectively used or ineffectively used. Now this particular table is actually giving us a general picture of the quality of um, the equivalence for the 40 COVID-19 terms as determined by um, each term's overall score across the three um, parameters. So based on uh, 
uh, each terms of row score, the equivalents were categorized uh, into three. Uh, we have uh, perfect equivalents, and then uh, near perfect equivalents, and then lastly we have adverse equivalents. So the perfect equivalents are those uh, equivalents that are perfectly matching um, uh, or perfectly describing the concept that is described by the source term. So we had nine of these, uh, and a good example of a perfectly uh, uh, a perfect equivalent is kubanika uh, opuma. Uh, which is simply translated into uh, struggling to breathe. So this is uh, a term that is or an equivalent that uh, 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 represents shortness of breath. Um, near perfect terms um, or near perfect equivalents we are talking of are those equivalents that describe a concept but do not um, uh, not fully. They don't de describe it fully. So uh, some of the aspects of the uh, 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 original concept are, are left out. So a good example uh, uh, of this is kusamba manja, which is washing hands. Uh, so in the context in which this was used, uh, it was representing hand hygiene. So as we know, hand hygiene involves a lot and not only uh, washing hands. So uh, uh, we had a total in total 28 near perfect uh, equivalents. But um, as for adverse equivalence, these are absolute wrongs. So when a, a concept was wrongly actually uh, uh, translated, uh, so we didn't have a lot of uh, such kind of terms, but uh, we had uh, three. Uh, for example, Kusaka and Homer in COVID-19, which simply translates uh, into looking for people with COVID-19 as in contact tracing. So contact tracing um, is not necessarily hunting for people with COVID-19, but actually those who have been in contact with a known case or coronavirus. This was uh, uh, in, in one context used instead of COVID-19. So as we'll see, uh, this is uh, uh, an adverse equivalent because it is uh, actually wrong. So when you look at the perfect equivalents, uh, uh, one um, main feature they share is that most of them are culturally uh, 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 grounded concepts. For for example, kutenta um, watubi, uh, which is a fever, as well as zipangizo zoezela, zipangizo zoezela, which is a, uh, uh, an equivalent for test kits. These are familiar terms uh, in the health sector in Malawi. For example, fever, it is a symptom not only for COVID-19, but for other diseases like malaria, zibangizo zoezera, test kits, they are also used for other diseases. So uh, including HIV, for example, HIV and AIDS. So these are familiar uh, concepts. As a result, it's not difficult for uh, uh, communicators to identify uh, their equivalent. That's why we they have come out as perfect equivalents. Conversely, uh, for the adverse equivalents, most of the concepts are, are not uh, 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 culturally grounded. They are relatively new concepts in the health uh, sector in Malawi. So, for example, uh, they show analogies, analogies for contact tracing and even coronavirus itself. These are concepts that are new. Uh, um, that's why we are still struggling in Chichewa to, to find uh, appropriate um, uh, designations for these concepts. So this table provides uh, a detailed count of equivalence per category under each parameter. And in categorizing, um, those um, terms that scored five were categorized as perfect, those scored three to four were categorized as near perfect, and those which scored one to two were categorized as adverse. So in terms, for example, in term, uh, under correctness, we had 17 perfect terms and the 21 near perfect terms, as well as two, only two adverse terms. So uh, uh, a perfect term, good example is katemela, which simply means vaccination. This is a common term, so no problem with that. But an example of an adverse um, uh, translation or adverse term is coronavirus uh, being uh, uh, used instead of COVID-19 in Zizindikiroza coronavirus, which is symptoms of coronavirus. So here, 
the coronavirus is used as a disease instead of uh, 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 while it means a cause for that particular disease. So this kind of confusion is uh, really adverse. Uh, under consistency, um, we had 18 perfect terms and 18 near perfect terms and only four adverse terms. So for example, Mulini, which is the pandemic, uh, was used consistently, while an example of an adverse uh, term is Ukondo wa manja, uh, which is hygiene of the hands, and Kusamba manja, which is washing hands, as being used as uh, an equivalent for hand hygiene. So both uh, are talking about the hygiene of the hands, but uh, Kusamba manja, washing hands, is limited because uh, hand hygiene, as we, uh, I mentioned earlier, involves a lot. Yeah. Even without washing hands, you can use sanitizers. So washing hands as an equivalent for hand hygiene is limited in scope. Um, in terms of precision, we had 17 perfect equivalents, 20 near perfect equivalents, and three adverse equivalents. So a good example of a near perfect uh, equivalent is really what you really which translates simply as second pandemic. This is a, an equivalent for second wave. So when we say second pandemic, it's like it's a new disease that has come, uh, but it doesn't really capture the concept of being the same disease, but now hitting for the second time. So that uh, is missing, that aspect is missing. So in terms of uh, adverse equivalents, we had three. A good example is Zotzitetezela Zotchinga Vampuno and Dipakama, which literally translates into nasal and mouth self protection coverings as an equivalent for masks. So this one is adverse because the mask is not only for self protection. When you put on a mask, you're also protecting the other person. So this is a limited uh, kind of. Uh, 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 description of the concept of a mask itself so it is adverse in terms of precision so as we can see from the above tables perfect equivalents are few compared to near perfect uh, equivalents and the adverse equivalents combined so this simply tells us that there is an existence of information deficit in in the COVID-19 communications in Chichewa but as Mishra and Dexter emphasize containment Strategies for COVID-19 require broad public uh, compliance, uh, and this compliance derives directly from the consumption of correct information. In this case, it means we are missing out. So um, uh, the other major compromise that was observed in the data is the use of English terms in uh, Chichewa communication. So the technical terms were used and translated. So as suggested by the CDC and other major health institutions, public health information needs to meet the readability standards of at least grade six to, to eight in order for the general public to be able to, to, to consume the, the, the information. But unfortunately, most of these terms such as COVID-19, oxygen, sanitizer, pass, oximeter, etc. They were used uh, in their uh, original form without uh, translate, without being translated. Um, and this is uh, 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 so negative, especially in communities where health literacy is still very, very raw. So we can conclude from this study to say that the handling of terminology when communicating COVID-19 in Chichewa in Malawi is still hampered by avoidable uh, mistakes. Uh, though most of the uh, of the uh, equivalents are not adverse, but their potential to negatively impact on the public cannot be underestimated. So there is need for a clear uh, there are need for clear national guidelines for uh, uh, on you how to use language for COVID nineteen communication in Chichewa and other local languages, of course. So this is, is the only way uh, that can make sure that we achieve our goal of creating. Uh, messages that are universally um, accessible. So these are some of the uh, uh, resources that are used for this presentation. Um, you, you'll be able to look at them. Uh, Thank you.